So this is part three of a video a series of three. Parts one and two will be down below. And you'll notice that we've so far recorded and shown you some of the strategies we've used to get a business from scratch with no cost, no marketing fees, all the way up to ranking and doing really well. And now the business is bringing in inquiries and leads and the business is now beginning to thrive. And we've come across all sorts of challenges along the way, but ultimately now we're ready to really begin to get this business to grow with some great new strategies. And this video is full of the very recordings I use on a real business, but things go wrong as well. And so you'll see those recordings too in this part. And so by the end of this video, you will be able to have the knowledge of a pro, and yet we started off as a beginner in part one. So sit back and enjoy the rest of this video series. Everyone wants to be number one when it comes to improving their SEO ranking. And local ranking, of course, is a difficult thing to improve if you don't know what you're doing each week. So sometimes it's good to set aside a little bit of time each week and have a little process, a workflow that you follow and that you do on a regular basis. And what that will do is that will give a signal over time that you're an authority, that you're regular, you're trustworthy. Google just knows that when it goes to your website or your Google My Business information, that it's up to date and reliable. And that takes time to establish. So today's video is going to look a little bit more of what, what regular things can we do for LaRue Window Cleaning Services to make sure that Google sees it as an authority and that Google knows it can trust it, that it's kept up to date. And also, how does it actually work? I mean, is it a case you wake up one morning and suddenly you're number one? Or is it a case of it's just a constant, gradual process, a little bit of percentage here, a little bit of percentage there. And over time, you look back and see how things have changed. Well, most of you probably already know that there's no magic formula when it comes to getting lots of traffic in Google. And it is a little bit of a hare and tortoise way of thinking. Some people want to be dashing, getting number one straight away with no effort whatsoever. But if you have that tortoise method, recognizing as a compounding growth, then you'll really get there over time. And we're going to see what things will give it that compounding growth. In fact, we're even going to show you a bit later in the video what a compounding growth is. So this is part of a series where we're helping a business from absolutely nowhere on Google My Business. Over the past month now, we've been just checking in, doing a few tweaks. Today, we're going to help it get a regular workflow to help it with its boost in local SEO. So follow along, do it for your business and make sure you haven't missed any of the previous episodes that's got us to this particular episode in the series. So you can always invent your own workflow every time you log in. You may find there are things that continuously change and get updated. And it's always good to just see if Google wants something in particular. So I click on here, get started and anything here that you can just answer. So for instance, here is a LaRue open. Yes, market open. So yep, we'll do that. Um, so these are things just to clear. So part of your workflow needs to be perhaps just reacting to conversations that Google want with you. In fact, um, we'll just click save on those for now. Now you might feel, well, why bother doing all that? But that again is just giving Google a signal that your business is very much up and alive and uh, very much wanting to do business. It's only interesting showing businesses that are very much interested in helping customers. Why? Well, because that makes sense. Google is wanting the best businesses for its customers and then customers will continue to use Google to find new business. So it works for Google and it works for businesses. Now we're going to try and put together a workflow that's going to help you improve your SEO ranking today. That's what we're going to do. There's going to be some hidden gems in here as well. So look out for those. So the first thing I'd always do before I, I go any further is you will just notice is it having an impact, the things we're doing? Now, about a month ago, there was no views, there was no searches, there was no activity because LaRue Window Cleaning Services didn't exist as far as Google was concerned. And now within a month or so, within 28 days, we've now got it where all these pluses are coming through. People are finding the business. There is phone calls. My customers or my clients telling me that he has had phone calls come through and there is activity. Also, another thing you'll notice is the posts are being kept up to date. So this one was just written regarding COVID. 
and you do want to continuously add new posts. We'll come on to that again in a moment. And as I come down here, one of the things we're going to look at in a future video, probably the next video, will be changing this because this is a ridiculously long website name. So we're going to buy a domain and I'm going to show you how to do that on a future video, probably the next one. And just working through here, there's a few other things. It's saying add logo. The logo has already been added. This is a bug. So if you've got this, as I've got it on all of my um, UK uh, businesses, this is a bug that Google, for some reason, I even raised it with Google, they still haven't cleared this out yet. So I'm going to go back to the top. And the first thing I do, so there's going to be four things. So number one is check your insights. So we're going to insights and insights is growing. It's gradually changing. And one of the things you'll notice on insights is it starts to tell you what's actually been happening. Now, this is great to see, but over the last few days, the green one is visits of websites. So on that occasion, there were two visits of website. There were two direction requests as well. So that's when they try and find you on Google Maps because they want to contact you. And the blue ones are phone calls. So in the last few weeks, we've had two phone calls by means of Google My Business. And again, this gives you an idea of what days are most successful when it comes to phone calls. So there's lots of information here. You notice also all other window cleaners, that's represented the average window cleaner in red. Whereas LaRue Windows, which was absolutely nothing here just a month ago, is hitting some pretty big figures already. 240 views of his photos, 236 on that particular day. And you'll find every time we add in a few new photos, we're getting a lot more traffic through. So we're getting 257% more views than other window cleaners in the area. So again, just gives you a bit of information. And also what's been really good is I've encouraged the business owner to ask for customer photos. So looking at other window cleaners that have been around for maybe months or years, you notice they just have a few photos and a few customer ones. We've already managed to get two. So it looks like the average there is one. We've got two customer photos and 24 photos. So this is all going to prove to be a positive signal to Google in the coming months ahead. Now, the reason we're actually here is not to analyze the insights as such, but just to see if there's any keywords that we can use before we start writing anything. So I'm going to go down to here. We'll see that the only keyword at the moment that's being found is LaRue. So that's a shame, really. We're hoping to see things like uh, window cleaning. I just click open more, but there is nothing else at the moment. So people are, are kind of giving a signal to Google that the branding LaRue is pulling in traffic. What we're going to want to do is increase the opportunity to get the word window cleaning services or poll system. We're trying to get that as being the next way in which people find the business. And once they find that business, well, then they'll continue to to then hopefully become new customers in the local area. So insights is one thing I do. And part of insights is just also combining that with just seeing where you are. So you would have seen a previous video of how persuaded you can get free credits as well. And uh, you can just see whether or not there is any increase. So you can run this on a weekly basis. So if I go to here, you'll see that uh, I do a scan each week and that will then tell me um, whether there's been any increase on uh, Google My Business. So let's just go back to here. So we can see that at the moment he's just starting out, but to get in the top 20 is pretty good because there's a lot more than 20 window cleaners in the Bournemouth area. So that's something that we're going to be monitoring in the months and weeks ahead. So insights will give you keywords, which we haven't really got at the moment. It will also tell us, or we can measure with Persuaded to see the success of what we're doing and measure the success. So the second thing you need to do once you've done insights is you need to go into photos. And what I would say again on a weekly basis is you just want to keep adding a photo. Now there's the proof, we've already got the logo. Um, adding videos is good, which we haven't done yet. Adding photos for an interior doesn't really apply for window cleaning. So to add a photo, um, so I've got again, my um, client has given me a photograph here. So he's just sent that through. So I'll just show you that. And again, he's trying to demonstrate that he can get to the heights using the poll system. So that's the purpose of that photo. So what we'll do, we'll upload that photo. You click on plus and then just drag the photo across, let go. And that's it. And then that gives again another bit of information to Google. So you notice we posted a photo last week, 43 views. 
Last week, 245 views. Two weeks ago, 32. So it does vary um, depending on the shot. Um, and you'll notice uh, that if you go back, some of the older ones probably will get more views. Um, it's kind of difficult to understand why it is that some get more views than others. But uh, this is a good selection. Make sure when you do upload photos that they're your own photos and not photos that are just taken from a website or belonging to someone else. Now, before I go on to the third thing that you need to do, I just wanted to talk for a moment about why are we doing this? And in effect, it's just exponential growth or it's a compound growth. So what you're doing is, is the more photos you add, the more posts you add, the more ways in which you add keywords that are in line with the ones that you're being found on, the more effort you put into building up your reviews and the quality of your reviews, answering your reviews, answering any quotes, the more information you keep adding on a constant, regular basis, you're compounding upon what you've already got. So just, you know, if, if 100 photos brings one phone call in, then on that basis, do 200 photos and you'll get two phone calls a month. And if you did 500 photos, you get five phone calls a month. It's kind of a compounding effect that gradually grows. And then suddenly you'll find that Google breaks you through into another area where you'll suddenly be found under another keyword and it goes on and on. And it's a bit like the old legend of having a grain of rice um, that uh, is doubled on each square. So the first square, it's one grain of rice and then it comes two grains of rice, then four and so on. What happens by the time you get to the 64th square? Well, you can only, you need to get to just a few squares to see the compounding effect, the compounding growth that's shown by this illustration. What does this do? It just shows you that as you keep adding more posts, as you keep adding more photos, as you keep talking about the services you produce, and as you keep adding more and more to what Google asks of your business, just on a regular weekly basis, just half an hour, say a week, you will see a massive increase in the way in which that markets you to your local SEO. You'll then see the ranking boost that's often spoken about, but it does take effort and time. And most businesses aren't doing it, or if they are doing it and not doing it very well, because they don't really understand it. And that's the purpose of these videos. If you give it a thumbs up, then it'll help this video help others as well. So hopefully you're enjoying this video. Give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, obviously do make sure you do that. Now I'll come to the third area. And the third area is all about posts. And there are different types of posts as well. We're going to add another post. So we've just done one a minute ago with a COVID update. So again, on a weekly basis, try and keep this up to date. It doesn't have to have much information. It doesn't even require a photograph. You'll see that just over a week ago, we did a photo or two on this one. Again, just illustrating some of the services. And with all posts, one of the things you need to do is make sure that really every single week you update it. Try and include the area you cover. So in this case, Bournemouth. Try and include your business name uh, with perhaps the area you cover. So we've got the Rue Window Cleaning Services there. Try and include the services you cover too. And then decide, do you want a call now button this time round, or do you want to link to your website and so on? And you can just kind of keep varying this really, just keep it natural. But this is building up. And as this builds up, this is just producing little mini pages on the website. So you would have saw the website in a previous video, but if we just click on there, here's the website, here's all the posts, here's all the reviews, which we'll come onto as well. It's just building it up gradually and it's compounding the effect of what you're doing. So let's just go back to the posts. And I've written a post already, again, some keywords involved, and we've already just uploaded a photo. So what we'll do, we'll write the post. If you add, here's a little bonus tip. If you add events, it produces an H1. So if you can come up with events, you do get some extra benefits from an SEO point of view, which we're going to come onto a video. I'll show you how to do that on a future video. But most of the time we're just using what's new. So you click on add photos. And if you click on albums, you'll also see the ones you've already uploaded. So you can always, rather than upload a new one, you can just up, use one that you've just uploaded. So here's one that we just uploaded a minute ago. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to use that as my main photo. Oh, in that case, the photo you uploaded is too small. So 
what I'll do is I'll add the original. There you go. So it just goes to show that uh, you have to keep an eye on things. Uh, this is then going to be uh, copy and pasted in. So I just wrote this. So LaRue La Window Cleaning Services. Um, so that's there producing or emphasizing that as a keyword. Um, it's mentioned again as a keyword, Window Cleaning Services, which is the main category. Then we've got a list of some of the other things that they offer. So that's good. And then again, LaRue Services mentioned there, Bournemouth Christchurch. OK, good. So that's ready to go. And this time, let's have a um, learn more. And that needs to take you through to a link. Actually, we're going to have a website next uh, video. So let's actually not use the learn more. Let's um, go for the call now. And that will then give them an opportunity. You just preview it, just make sure. Does that look good? Yeah, it looks fine. Um, ah, the photo's not really ideal. So let's just go back. So do we need to rejig, recrop? Yes, we do. So, ah, okay, so that's good. So that gives a bit more clarity if we have it there. Just preview that. Okay, so we can now see that's there, fine, so we'll publish it. You can view it on search as well. And there you go, that's how it's going to look. But, uh, and it always looks so double because this one is the latest one and then this one is the latest one. <laughs> so it always doubles up because this is just showing how it looks, whereas this is showing your latest one. So don't worry about that, that makes sense. So we've gone number one insights number two photos number three posts and number four number four is replies and reviews so when you have a review we've also said the importance of replying to it now i've asked my client to reply to them but not just to say thanks but to then say something personal so that it shows he's read what they've put because they've taken time out to write a nice review. They've taken time out to give them five stars in all these cases, which is great to see. But what you need to do is make it personal and then also try and include mentioning of say areas. So he's mentioned Bournemouth and Southbourne here, which is good. Or mention a quality. So he's mentioned the services as a high standard or mention something else like customer service. So this is really good. So what he's done is he's gone on each one of these and he's given them um, a little bit of an answer that's included things like his branding or his services. And that's just being polite, but at the same time, it's given you a little bit of extra keyword. Um, yeah, and they're all different as well, which is good. That's exactly what we want. So has there been any that he hasn't replied to? No, nope, they've all been replied to, so that's really good as well. So there's the fourth thing really, is just make sure you use keywords and also ask your customers if they can supply photos. I wonder, I think he did say, or we saw two, didn't we? So I'm not sure where they are, but... And I think if you carried on doing these four things on a weekly basis, you're going to see growth. That doesn't mean that that's the only thing to be done, but those are kind of the bulk of the regular work you need to do if you want to see a boost in your Google SEO and in your Google My Business presence. Now, hopefully you found some of those things really helpful and you've already now set aside time to work out what your workflow will be each week. And you will see an increase in traffic if you continually do this over the coming months ahead. So today we're going to look at something that I guarantee most of your competitors aren't doing on Google My Business at the moment. And so by doing this, you're going to increase the chances of you beating your competitor when Google Maps works out the rankings. So what is this thing that's untapped? Well, basically it's adding products. Now I've done a couple of videos in the past on this, but it does have products and an area for products and it even categorizes those products. And what's more, you can use those products as a way of increasing your ability to get more sales and get people exposed more to what you offer, whether it's a service or a product. So let's just cover a couple of questions. First of all, what happens if you haven't got any products? Well, you can still use it. What you can do is you can wrap up certain services or certain things that you offer and you could offer them like a product. You could call it your silver package or your gold package for whatever service it is that you offer. Another question, what about if you haven't got a price 
for that service or that product? Well, this will enable you to have a price range. So you can kind of leave it open to a certain range of prices for your customers on those particular products. If you don't even want to commit to a range, you can just not put a price at all. What else is the advantage of this? Well, it means you've got more photographs showing your services and your products. And the gem really is the fact that you can categorize your products and you can use keywords. And these keywords in this categorization is gonna have an impact on your ranking too. So let's jump straight in. Let me show you a live example of this. I've just typed into Google flower shops to get an example. Uh, let's go to view all. And it's just, if we go through some of these, you'll soon notice that, uh, that they kind of vary quite dramatically. So if I go for this one here, they're advertising some good pictures here, but there's no products whatsoever. Let's go to the next one. So here we've got products, which is great. So we've got the products here, we've got quite a good range of them, but they've not used categories and categories enable you to have keywords. So let's see if we can find another one. I think it was um, lands down here but they also use categories. You notice these products here, I mean, if I click on this, 45 pounds, you've got this real rich information and also advertise other products. So it's now like a, like a mini shop. If I go back, you'll see that it then gives me different products as well. You've got them under different categories as well. Now that may well work for your business. So I'm gonna try this with LaRue window cleaning services in a minute. We're gonna work out what products we're going to have and we're gonna work out what categories we can have. But think about your business. Just think about the products you can offer. Now let me just say at this point, when we speak of products, don't think it has to be something specific. It could be a service that you make into a product. So a window cleaner doesn't really sell products. He doesn't sell, say, buckets, window cleaning buckets, but he will sell the service of cleaning, say, a drive with a jet wash or cleaning a conservatory. And that in itself is a product that he can sell. He can package up. And that's what we're going to look at doing for him. But think about your business. With flowers, well, it's quite straightforward. We've got the categories of romance and spring. Let's just look if there's, a, I think there's another one too I saw, um, flowers at 166. They really use products well. Look at this, lovely photos. Uh, so you've got the range there. But look at this, Mother's Day flowers, fresh flowers, Christmas flowers, flower bouquets. What does this do? This is telling Google a lot more about what you offer. It's also giving keywords. If someone does a search for Mother's Day flower shops, then this is going to ring alarm bells. This is going to come up probably number one. And if I click on that, you'll notice then it, it produces to the top the product that it's referring to. And then below, you've got other products as well. So this is a way of building a shop, building an e-commerce. Now, what happens if you wanted to buy these? Well, at the moment, it'll link through to ordering online. So if you've got a website, then you'd make the link. You can order it online. Let's just try this. And there you go, it's gone through to the shop. Shame it hasn't quite put that uh, in my basket. That would be the next thing I would do. I'd link it so that it actually puts that particular flower in your basket. But they're, they're getting there. That's a pretty good way of connecting the two up. Let's just go back take I think it was Christchurch florist as well they had a good example of products again and they've got Valentine's and so on so this would be quite useful let's just notice also questions and answers which we're going to come on to on a future episode so we're going to head to LaRue window cleaning services now and I'll show you how to add those products there's two ways you could go to posts and you can add products here so there it goes our product or the other way is to just click on products, which is what we're going to do now. And this just tells you that there's potential customers that are out there that want to see products. So this is again a clue. And you notice here, get an idea of if you can put photographs that represent the product, then that would be great too. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to click get started and I'm going to select. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you the process that I've just gone through. So let me just, um, so I've written out here products and categories and rather than just having say window cleaning, why not break it up into commercial window cleaning and residential window cleaning? Because again, it could well be that that would make sense as far as products are concerned. So let's just run through this. The categories, well, there's only two categories really at the moment. There may be others, 
but at the moment I've just gone for commercial and residential. And then the products themselves, well, they could be under the same areas, uh, residential as commercial. So you've got, now these are services, but we're going to wrap them up as products. So notice what we've got here, 94 potential customers, and yet that we've not given them any products to look for. So we're gonna use some of our services as products. So let's click get started. And the nice thing is it's pretty straightforward. You can just pick uh, a category, create a new category. So I'm gonna have a commercial category and I'm going to have a residential category. So let's put the commercial category first, product names I'm gonna have. So I'm gonna have to find a photograph that will show that. So I've got some commercial photographs here. So let's just use this one and I'll click that. That loads. And of course I can pinpoint it a bit better if I want to show the differences. So we've got a bit of a before and after going on here. So let me just push this up a bit and bring this down a little bit as well. So there you just get the kind of contrast of the clean in its uh, kind of halfway through. So that's useful. So let's just run through what we've done so far. We've got the photo. Commercial UPVC clean is what we're offering as a product. Uh, we've created a new category called commercial. We can choose whether or not we want a product price on it. So we might always have a set price on certain jobs, or we might even just have a range. Now I can't fit in the range because I'm not estimating these jobs, so I'm gonna leave it because it's optional. We can put a product description. That's, um, I've put a little bit of wording there. And we can add a button. So it might be a case of if we had an offer, we could say get offer. In this case, we probably just want them to contact us. So order online. And then I'm just gonna put them straight through to our website, the laruewindowcleaning.com. So I'm just gonna put that in there, that URL, laruewindowcleaning.com. And that's pretty much it. It's ready to go, click save. And you notice it's now given us a section called commercial. So at the moment we've got one product. Okay, so it doesn't really work until you have at least two products to get the categories working. So let's, select, let's add a second product. Okay, so there's the start of what we're doing. So all our products, we've got commercial, we've got UPVC cleaning. So we've got residential and we've got commercial. And you might want to just make them more consistent. So I perhaps should put residential on there, but you get the idea. And how does that all look now then when you go to your website? And there now you can see the products are beginning to show. So the rear window cleaning services, there we've got products, there we've got commercial and UPVC. These are key words that people are gonna use. And here again, commercial, residential. So we might think about that, think about how we can perhaps make that even more useful with keywords. But this is all extra coming in, extra information that people will find along with the questions and answers we'll look at at a future video as well. Do you ever struggle with your Google business reviews? Maybe you just don't get enough of them, or maybe you get a fake review or even a bad review and you just don't know what to do with them. Or maybe you just don't understand how reviews seem to impact rankings. I recall my very first review and it was a negative review for my business. And I was devastated. Yet I handled the miscommunication well and very quickly it became a five star review. And if you're like me, you are keen to get more reviews, but then you realize they're not that easy to get hold of. And sometimes when you even get a really great review, it suddenly just disappears. So for many years now, I've been searching the internet to understand how reviews work and how you can get more reviews. I mean, how important are they to a business ranking in Google and to get in the top three on Google Maps? But there is very little information about it. And often when I watch videos on YouTube, it was contradictory at best. And I got to the point where I thought I'd never really ever get to understanding how reviews work and whether they are a ranking factor. That is until I started working with loads of clients and helping them optimize their Google business profile. And I started experimenting with profiles and with my own profile and found some great results. And it turns out that reviews are incredibly powerful but not the way that most people think. And the reason it's hard to discover is because there's a bit more involved. It's not a direct ranking factor, it's an indirect ranking factor. So reviews are really powerful, they're much misunderstood, and there's some really simple ways to deal with the common problems that most businesses face when it comes to reviews. So whether you get poor reviews, 
bad reviews, fake reviews, or just wonder why it is that a competitor who has less reviews than you seems to be outranking you, it's now all starting to make sense. And what you need to do is to just grasp a few basic principles and then use that knowledge to transform your business. And although it took me a while to work this out, I don't want you to have the same issues that I had. So I want to share these tips, these strategies, some downloadable guides, and some secrets that I've used on my businesses and that will work on yours too. So I decided to build a 60 minute workshop that's going to sort those issues out, will help you discover my strategy for getting more Google business reviews, and also to enable you to understand how reviews impact your ranking so that you can improve your ranking for your business. And in the workshop, I'll walk you through everything you need to know, how to get more reviews, why reviews are important, when to ask for reviews, where opportunities for reviews can be found, and what the best way is to deal with fake and bad reviews. I'll also include my fake and bad review toolkit, which is a comprehensive guide to fix all the common issues. But you have to hurry because right now there are only a few early bird spots available on this pre-launch before the price goes up. I've been working super hard on this. I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you. So click the link below and then learn how you can secure your spot on my workshop. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you there very soon. You know, most business owners register with Google, so they make this simple conclusion that because they get no calls straight away, Google My Business doesn't work. Well, I'm about to show you exactly what happens when you do start a business from scratch on Google and just do things the right way. And I'll show you how quickly you can get it ranking and get customers giving you a call. And I'm taking a real local business that had no marketing inquiries, they were paying for ads that didn't work, and it got so bad they even asked for a refund. And now the situation, well, he's turning away work. But the crazy thing is, is you can do that too for your business. And it doesn't take that long as well, as you'll see. And what's more, this step-by-step -step process I use, I've used it again and again, and it works again and again. And that's why I've received comments like from this subscriber, who just wants me to make a video that shows you how you can rank a Google business profile from scratch. And that's what this video is going to do for you today. So this is Lee the owner of LaRue Window Cleaning Services. And I felt Lee was the perfect fit for this strategy because his business has been around for about 12 years. As you'll see, he's tried all sorts of various ways of marketing, but nothing was really bringing any great success. So Lee, how's business going at the moment then? It's not going as, as well as I'd like. Um, I've been looking for uh, different areas to um, advertise and but I've tried uh, yellow pages and barely anything through that check a trade and it really didn't supply the, the the need that I was looking for very little traffic so that didn't work either so um yeah looking for different areas um to try and increase my work I mean I reckon I could get things turning around pretty quickly for you yeah I mean it's worth a go I've I've not uh, I've got nothing to lose I'm, I'm pretty desperate in the sense of nothing's working at the moment and I've tried canvassing as well so I don't really fancy doing that again so yeah give it a go and, and nothing else to lose so yeah so I put in the work I would accept the challenge I would make his 12 year old business see whether or not I could get it rating and ranking very quickly and the strategy was quite simple could I get it to number one could I get inquiries coming through all the time could I get his business so there's a point where he was turning down business? And that'll be done by just consistent posting and giving the right signals to Google. So the first thing is just to make sure it was registered with Google, which it was, to add me as a manager, which we did, and we were away and off we go. And you've probably already got your business set up, but if you haven't, then obviously I've got plenty of videos on here that will show you how to do that. Okay, so this is my plan for Lee, is to really do no clever stuff, but it's just to really get it authentic before Google, and also just to update it on a regular basis, week to week. And that just means regular content, relevant content, photos regularly updated, reviews coming in on a basis of really that's consistent, and also just making sure that the profile has got 100% approval by Google. So I set about getting photos from Lee, as he was out and about doing his work, I'd ask him to take videos, take photos, ask customers would they mind just giving them a review and just sharing that review link with them as well. So it's quite a simple basis to start with. But I also needed to understand what was working. So I had to look at his competition and see what they were doing, see how hard it was to rank against them. And once I understood what the competition was doing to get to number one, I would also improve and just do it better. You know, the challenge is you put a lot of work in the first few weeks and nothing happens. 
But without a website and very little reviews, that's obviously going to be the case. And at this stage, I knew that Lee was probably thinking, this isn't really going to work, but he was just going along with it. And this is something that most business owners seem to struggle with. And it's probably why they end up going to Google Ads and paying for traffic, because they see then immediate results. I was then in contact with Lee and he asked me, could he blast out loads of emails to get lots and lots of reviews in? Would that make a difference? And you know, again, that's something that most people try to do but actually it doesn't always give great results because suddenly if you've gone from nothing to say 20 reviews coming in, Google just immediately thinks something's spammy and it will often then shut down the business. And that's fair enough because Google's saying, well, that's not really how life works in business. That if you're an authentic business, then it should happen on a natural basis. You'd expect reviews to come in once or twice a week, not 20 in one go. So what we're trying to do is make things natural and not get those alarm bells ringing at Google's office. So a couple of weeks go by and Lee's been asking for reviews. They've been trickling in and it's been going well. And one of the other things is just to ask for photos from those reviewers if they can. And that always makes a difference too. Anyway, I felt Lee was trusting my judgment. We started to get one or two calls coming in. And this was now the beginning of a change. So within a month, things were turning around. So each week we're putting a new post, we'd use a few keywords, we were getting a couple of phone calls, things were beginning to grow. The authority was beginning to build in Google. We added a free website that Google gives you. We added a better description. We started adding a few little pages to that website. In fact, everything we did was recorded last year. So the playlist where I'll put a link above now, where if you wanted to find out all the details of how we went about in detail of each of the changes, then it's all recorded there. So you can watch that from beginning right down to the end. So the plan, just to remind you, was to be authentic and to update regularly week after week. And we were sticking to that and it was beginning to show. So when I next caught up with Lee a few weeks later, this is what he had to say, and you can see a big difference. To be honest, I'm really surprised. I've been using my Google business now, um, we're saying, and I've just been inundated with calls. I've been getting call several calls a week. It's almost got to a point where it's a bit too much to handle. The results are just there. I've just had so much work, I just can't believe it. It's great. It's really, really good. And what type of inquiries have you had then, Lee? Generally, most of the work has been um, direct phone calls. They've got my details. They've been in touch with me directly. And a lesser part of that has been directly through the My Google uh, Business app. Uh, they've contacted me through that. And they're local um, with, within my, the area that I work. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it's gone really, really well. I can't believe it. It's great. And suddenly Google just goes, okay, you are authentic and it now starts to rank you. And because you're real, and I've got real customers that are looking for real businesses, then it puts the genuine business and the genuine customer together. They're looking for you and your services, and now Google trusts you and puts you forward. And then it gives signals. If the people then find that they contact you, they phone you, they look for directions, and they then are satisfied with the fact that you are who you say you are, an authentic business, then suddenly that gives all the right signals to Google to keep promoting you. So what was it I discovered that course is perfect match, like a tango together? Well, this growth just comes from understanding that rather than trying to please Google, just try and please your clients, your customers, and get them to feed that back through Google and through Google Business Profile. And soon the two work hand in hand. Google wants right businesses to get to number one. It wants authentic businesses, trustworthy businesses. And so what I discovered is that first, most businesses don't stick at it. They give it a few weeks, they don't see any response, and they just give up. So don't give up, keep going. It takes about a month or so before you'll really see great results. And bearing in mind, it only takes about 30 minutes a week to update a few photos, to add a post, and maybe get a couple of reviews when you're doing your work. And then secondly, keep it real. Keep it authentic and trustworthy. Don't try and shortcut it, because Google recognizes that and the spam filters are designed to stop that happening. I learned that genuine, unique content, unique photos, genuine businesses being reviewed, they all get a great response from Google over time. And what's more is I try this again and again on different businesses, not just LaRue window cleaning, and it worked as well. I found that every time I tried it, it just worked. As you can see, again and again and again, the results are there. People are too distracted. They haven't got the time to focus on putting the information into Google, and making sure it's maintained, and making sure it's up to date. And if you look at your competition, you'll see the bulk of the profiles, they get registered and then then nothing happens to them. They perhaps just get a couple of responses and then they're left. And the thing with Google Business Profile 
is it's changing all the time. Google wants it to be the dominant way in which people find businesses locally. So it's an investment where if you can continue to get to the top, it's a lot easier to maintain. And so the purpose of my channel is to give you that ability to know what new changes come along and how you can improve in your authority to make sure you're doing the things that are gonna benefit your business. But the thing is, is you can't control Google. The algorithm's changing all the time, and what Google demands from businesses is getting more greater and requires a higher standard. And as I was planning to put together this video to help you, you'll never guess what happened next. And you know it's happening to other genuine businesses suspension. Now, if you want to know how to get your business reinstated from a suspension, then you need to watch this video next. So Google have just emailed me to say that the suspension is now going to be lifted on the LaRue window cleaning services, which is great because you may remember a few months back, I showed you a video of how I got LaRue window cleaning services, really getting loads of inquiries and then suddenly bam, a suspension came along and changed everything. And this has now been the long journey to get that back, that suspension removed and get the room and the cleaning services reinstated. And that's what this email is just confirmed with me. So there's the email that they sent me, but really to get to this point was quite a lot of pain. In fact, I want you and Google also to see the pain that genuine businesses go through when these suspensions happen. Let me just start off by asking, have you been suspended? Well, feel free to put a comment down below so that we can learn from other experiences too. So if you've been in a situation where you've contacted Google several times, then you're gonna love this video. And if you haven't been suspended, you need to watch this video because if it does happen to you, then this is a process you need to go through. So according to Google, if you do get suspended, it should take about 24 to 48 hours to sort out. So when the room window cleaning was then suspended, I thought it'd be a day or two. And in the past that's true, but as you'll see on this video, that is not the case. In fact, the whole process has been literally like trying to play Cluedo or Clue with Google themselves. So why Cluedo? Well, Cluedo is a game of deduction and that's pretty much the way to deal with Google when you get suspended. You've got to deduce exactly what's happened and what you've done wrong. Having an innocent business accused of and being suspended for no reason is a bit like being accused for the Cluedo murder. And you then have to justify and give reasons as to why you're innocent. So accusations flying around with no evidence in effect. You notice the wording from Google. They often say you're suspended due to quality issues. So it's so vague, it could be anything. And if you're not aware of what it is they're referring to, with no clues, what chance do you have? So this is where the game starts to begin. You have to now start to put things together to find out what Google's referring to. So I wondered if it was down to the fact that LaRue, when it was set up, he decided that he wanted to have 24 hour opening. So I wonder whether Google perhaps felt that wasn't realistic for a window cleaner. So now the deduction begins. It's Reverend Green with a candlestick in the hall. We have to put things together and see whether Google responds to it in a positive way. So in effect, we were saying it's LaRue in Bournemouth with 24 hour opening and then see what happens. Well, that didn't lead to anything, so let's try the next one. Colonel Mustard, you get the idea. But I also know I'm not the only one playing this game. Others are also emailing me, asking me to help them, or saying that they've had issues now for three, four, five weeks where Google isn't responding. Well, I understood the pain they were going through. I was going through the same thing. And it seemed that the more I tried, the harder efforts I put in, the worse it seems to be getting. It ends up becoming an even bigger mess because you're trying to sort out a problem that you have no clues on. There are some helpful Google guys that try to help me out and then they ask for different information, which I gave them. So on the whole, the community is very helpful. We're all trying to help each other, but Google could certainly improve in which the way that they give us information to understand what's gone wrong. So I tried something else as well. I thought, well, maybe it's because it really registered on the map and it's not a shop, it's a service, it's uh, from a home. So therefore maybe Google wanted to see it as a service only and not having visiting. And that's been one of the big ones that's happened this year. And that's one that I've done a whole video on. So I'll put a link down below to that video if you want to know about how to remove your business because it's a service and not a front end shop or a place where customers can visit. So hiding your address was another option, but that also didn't seem to solve the problem. So what other cards can I play in this Google game of Clue or Cluedo? 
I wanted to know the real reason a decent company was being suspended. So I've gone through all the obvious things, really ticked them off. So I ticked off the 24 hours and put it to a nine to five. I ticked off the address, but it was now hidden so people couldn't call. I gave them proof of the address and several photos of utility bills. I followed up on several times and they're asking to uh, confirm. I contacted them via Twitter, Facebook. I did it via email. I've used several contact forms. I followed through on all the processes that were correct. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. You just won't believe the hoops I had to go through just to try and get this sorted. And these are the traps that genuine businesses like yours can easily fall into while this process goes on with Google. So here you can see just all the things I did over a period of time. I tried absolutely everything. So again, I thought I'd just give you an update as to how things are going. So here I am. I am uh, just received another email and in there it says that uh, a person saying to me that they get a random message said that Google's been suspended because it was flagged for suspicious activity. What does that mean? And are all five star, I can't say that word, exponentially, exponentially. I mean, what is going on? I've got no idea what Google's playing at. And just to say there was a time when normally within a day or two, Google handled these things well. And now it's been, I don't know, it must be weeks and weeks. In fact, I just thought I'd have a look to see what the situation is now. So I go to LaRue Window Cleaning Services, open that up, and there you go. Still case of it needs to get sorted. You've been suspended again. Uh, so then I thought, well, how long ago was it? So I then looked at my emails and I noticed it was the 29th of July. 29th of July we've been waiting for, for this to be sorted out by Google. We've given everything they needed and uh, absolutely nothing sorted out yet. So when was this email today? This is, uh, we go to here, it's September the 15th. So I just did a search on Google. How many days between 29th of July to the 15th of September? And it's 48 days. So Google, 48 days, an innocent business has been waiting. You've been given everything you've asked for and nothing's coming back. So this is really disappointing and I'm not the only one. Every day businesses are saying the same. So something needs to be sorted really. It's frustrating because every day I'm receiving from other people like you innocent businesses saying the same thing that it's just not working out, that Google is not sorting these problems out at the moment. And it's just frustrating to think that innocent businesses are not being fairly treated by Google. And then I kind of decided, well then, how long actually is it now that I've been waiting uh, to get this sorted out? I tweeted to Google again the other day. I sent them through some information again about the business being innocent and needing to be re-established, reinstated. But I guess if you play Clue long enough, eventually something comes up. And something eventually did lead to the solution. So Lee sends me a screenshot saying that he's been reinstated. So I waited, I logged in, and it still wasn't reinstated. So why was he getting this screenshot? And why was he verifying it again? It had already been verified. And this business has been around for a year or so now. So what was he doing? And the result was he was logging in with a different Gmail account. And this different Gmail account had another attached Google business to the same profile. And in the end, it was becoming more evident that what he was verifying now at his end wasn't the same business as the one that we were trying to reinstate. And now I'm beginning to understand what's happened. That maybe 10 years ago, Lee had a different Gmail account and it's one that he doesn't use very often. And he may have just established his business as many did. They just perhaps acknowledged the fact that their business was on Google Maps and never did anything with it. And years rolled by, then I established his business for him. I redid it for him. There's nothing came up at the time when I put together that business. But in effect, a duplicated business has somehow been produced by using two different Gmail accounts. Now, most people have maybe one or two different email accounts. It could be they're both different Gmail accounts, one for business and one for your own personal use. And that was the situation here. In fact, what we discovered actually was there were three versions of this business. Now, here's my question to Google is why can't they just give us a clue as to why that was the issue that was being raised 
why that produced the alarm bells and why that could have then been resolved very easily. We could have resolved that within 24 hours if we even knew anything about it. We started this process on the 29th of July and it's now today the 14th of November and I'm making this video as we've just got it reinstated. That's 108 days, that's three months and 16 days that we've gone through. Now that's not the 24 to 72 hours that we were promised. And we didn't get any clues, just by fluke, we came across that Gmail account and what it had done. So now what do you do? Well, you can't have three businesses operating from the same address, that wouldn't make sense. And also the one that we were wanting to use is now still suspended. But actually what has happened is by deleting the other two, we can remain or keep the one that's just been verified and Google's been good enough to actually transfer that information across. So there's one thing Google has done, it appears, is transfer the same information across to the duplicated original, and it now appears that by deleting the others, we can then do that. So if you want to know how to delete an account and keep the same information, well, I'm gonna make another video that will help you to do that, and that video you need to watch, and it'll be here when it's ready. So if you're a small business starting out or you feel like you're a beginner when it comes to Google My Business or SEO, and you're looking to grow your business to get more customers, more clients, more inquiries, more phone calls, then this is gonna help you today. Three powerful business tips for small businesses and for beginners. So what's a beginner? Well, maybe you're an entrepreneur and you've just got a new website, maybe with Shopify, Wix, WordPress, and you just want to get people to pick up the phone to find out about your business and then to get more inquiries, more customers. How do you go about it? Well, that's a beginner. But of course, if you're a small business, it could be that you don't have a shop front and you're working from home or you're a service that goes out to help others. How can you use Google My Business and understand SEO, search engine optimization, to help you grow your business? Well, I'm gonna show you three powerful tips. And once you go through these things a couple of times, you're gonna be well underway of seeing how you can get growth for your business. And I say this as a business owner myself, a small business owner, but in more recent times with Google My Business, it's become a lot easier to get inquiries and to get business. And as I go through these three tips, I've also got a great tool that I'm gonna show you that will give you some credits and it will help you see where the growth can be found on a local business SEO basis. So let's jump straight in and I'll show you this first small business tip. The thing to do is to really nail what you can do with your Google My Business listing. So we'll presume you've already got your listing up and running, but on the left-hand side, just go through each of the things that you can do. So add a post if you haven't done so for a while, add information that's required. I mean, here there's lots of information that's not been added in. So add it in, it's just a case of a click in the pencil, put the information in, check the phone number, and just work through the page. Now that sounds pretty simple, but it's also worth bearing in mind that yours may look different. Now this is a restaurant, and so with a restaurant you get extra features. You can have menus, you can have food ordering, and these extra features, even bookings, if you take advantage of them and if no one else is doing so in your area, then you're going to be number one. You're the one that people will find on Google Maps. You're the one, you're the business that people will dine with because you're providing that information to your customers. So I would highly recommend that you work through each one of these. There's videos on each of these things. If you go to my website or if you go to Zanet and then do a search for what you're looking for on YouTube, you'll find guides on how to do that. Let me give an example. So if you had a hotel, for example, they again have quite a lot of extra features and information that's needed from the business owner. So if you consider how rich it is when you do searches on Google for, for say, accommodation, uh, often this is also uh, very much dovetailing with other areas like uh, TripAdvisor or Booked.com. And uh, when you add then to this, this information with your photos for your Google My Business listing, you then get a much more richer entry into Google's index, into its database. And if you want proper guidelines on this, you can go to Google themselves and ask what it is that they require. The hotel or with dining, they do tend to have extra features. And you can just work through this. It explains what you need to do. 
Alternatively, if you, if you do a search for say, Google My Business for Hotels, you'll see I've got videos here that will enable you to see what you can do to optimize your hotel. So like I said, it's just a case of working through and improving your Google My Business entry or your knowledge panel. So here's a very simple one on the left hand side. It's not got a lot of information, just a few photos, a very simplified version. Most people's is like this because they don't put the time and effort in. But if you do put the time and effort in, if you add the branding, the photographs, the logo, the information, then as you'll see, I mean, I've stacked this because this goes down and down the page, but I've stacked it again and again and again. So you can see that there's a lot more information that gets picked up by Google if you know what you're doing and what you're entering. And again, if you want a full understanding of how that works, then I've got this video, Optimize Google My Business Like a Pro. I'll put a link above and below as well for you to follow that. And that literally takes that idea of it being a very small entry that you've probably got at the moment and making reels and reels of entry that show when you do a search on Google My Business. So that's my first tip. Nail your Google My Business on the things that you can do. Now, my second tip is don't copy the wrong SEO habits. SEO habits of say two or three years ago are going to actually harm your business. So what are we talking about? We're talking about writing for search engines or bots now. We're talking about overusing internal links. We're talking about link farms, keyword stuffing, invisible text with the background and the text is the same color, duplicate content. Those are things you need to avoid. I mean, here's a few examples here is hidden text. So you, it's getting in links that can't be seen. So that's considering that's a person who wants to make his website rank, but he's not considering his customers and making it helpful for them. So he's more interested in his own benefits rather than his customers. Well, Google's found ways of reading that and understanding how that happens. Again, here we've got an example from Google of stuffing with keywords. That doesn't make any sense when you read it. It's evident that the person is only interested in being found for a certain keyword. Keywords need to be natural. Google understands that now. So in 2021, the old ideas of SEO are disappearing fast. They're actually going to damage you if you get them wrong. Now here's one that at the moment isn't damaging businesses on Google My Business. But believe me, it soon will do. What is it? Well, it's again, keyword stuffing in the title. So I've just done a random search here. I don't know any of these businesses. So if it's your business, I apologize. Plumbers in Auckland, New Zealand. When I look down here, apart from the adverts, which is fine, Auckland Plumbers Group. So if I hover over that, they're called Auckland Plumbers Group. So that's fine, that's no problem. I'm looking down here. So if you can just pick this bit out here, you'll notice, for example, this is JG Plumbing and it's called JG Plumbing and Gas Services Auckland. Well, they're meant to put their registered name and they haven't registered, I, I would assume, JG Plumbing and Gas Services Auckland. It's unlikely. Um, and, and you can just pick them out. At the moment, they're ranking high because of using the words Auckland or New Zealand or Emergency Plumbers. Emergency Plumber, Response Plumbing Limited. Now, if I go to their website, it's called Response Plumbing. If I open their website, let's just see what that is. So they're called Response Plumbing. So really and truly, according to the terms and conditions, it should be Response Plumbing. This Emergency Plumber is really viewed as a spammy title. So again, I don't want to be too harsh. The reason why this is all going to disappear very soon is because people are reporting it and it's a very easy way to report it. And it's one that some people will do. And as it gets reported, then a lot of these companies do then get uh, devastated when suddenly they need to be reinstated because they no longer have their entry. So at the moment, it's very lucrative to have a spammy title. Within a couple of days, you could actually get probably in the map pack for your local vicinity. So at the moment, it's something that Google hasn't fully addressed, but it is looking at changing. So there's my second thing. If you're starting out, if you're a beginner at Google My Business, don't go down the wrong habits of SEO. Don't read old 2019, 2018 information because a lot of it's wrong. And particularly when it comes to your Google My Business, just put your genuine business name and then just wait for Google to catch up. And my final tip to beginners is to just check your Google My 
Business Insights regularly. So the thing is, is if you've started out, registered your Google My Business, you need to respond to what your customers are doing. How do you know what your customers are doing? Well, there's a few ways you can do that. You can track keywords. You can track to see how you're optimizing, how you're performing, which we'll look at in a moment. But also you can just go to your insights and it will tell you how you're doing there. So it'll tell you whether you've improved or not. So I can look back on insights for this uh, business LaRue company and see that they're getting messages, they're getting calls, they're getting visits. Bearing in mind, they've only been around for a few months. So that's pretty good going. This tells me again that compared to other businesses, so this is a window cleaning business, they are hitting more traffic on a regular basis. Why? Because their photos are bringing in four times more traffic than their competitors. So that's useful information too. But one of the other really helpful bits of information is on the new performance, where there we can see what types of information are they getting through? How are people responding? So at the moment it seems it's calls, they're phoning them and there's one message as well. So that's good to see that that's a bit more information coming through there. Uh, anything else? Yes, we can look at keywords. So notice we've been optimizing it for window cleaning, window cleaners near me, LaRue being found for his branding as well. And if we just look through here, we can pick out these are what people are finding this entry on. So window cleaner Southbourne, window cleaner near me, that's a great one. And what we want to do is optimize. So as we build the Google My Business information through posts and through offers, we need to just check to see what is actually working because this is where the traffic is. This is what real people are searching in the search engines. And then they're finding this particular Google My Business entry. So if they don't know who he is, because these are based on the fact they know he's called LaRue, uh, then we need to make sure that things like local window cleaners, that's a great way to get real customers that haven't heard about you or window cleaner near me. That's another really good one. So this is positive to see that the little bit of work we've done with LaRue window cleaning services over the last couple of months is now beginning to really bring in genuine customers to our clients. And using this, this tool persuaded.io and I'll put a link down below that gives you double the credit and gives you some free credit as well. So don't miss out on that. But you can run scans and these scans will just show you. So a few weeks ago, we were mainly red, which means like we we're at the top 20. There wasn't really much going on for Bournemouth Window Cleaner. But gradually each week we run this and look at how gradually it's getting greener and greener. And that's the is area. So if we just click on here, for example, you'll see that just a few weeks ago, we we're now number twos and number ones in the area where he's based. And that's just positive effort, isn't it? That just shows you that gradually the more effort you put in, the more response you get back in his area. So that's why we would have got some traffic and some phone calls recently. I've not done anything for the last few weeks. So again, it's a regular thing you need to do, but it takes just five minutes to write a post or an offer. And that's something to consider. Now, if you want this tool, it's a brilliant tool, then make sure you don't miss it down below. Hopefully it's helped answer some of your questions. Hopefully you can see that the way this style of tutorial was given is in line with where you feel comfortable. And if that's the case, then you're going to find this really useful, this playlist that's aimed for beginners. But if you just want to know a bit more about Google My Business for Dummies, then head over to this video and I'll see you there. Are you a small business owner that just finds that in general, everyone talks about algorithms, they talk about how Google works, they talk about doing things to please Google, and yet you don't really understand how it all works. It seems so complicated. How can you possibly know what those thousands of things are in the database that control the algorithm? How can you possibly know what Google's after? Well, this video is going to show you exactly the process of why Google wants to do certain things, why Google My Business can actually be a really useful tool for you to use, and also how Google My Business is going to help your customers find you when they don't even know about you. So this is probably one of the most valuable videos I've produced because I've tried to do it through simple diagrams to explain the very easy process of what's really going on. Now, yes, it's true, there is a lot of other things that we don't cover in this video, but sometimes if you understand just the principle of what Google's trying to do, what your customers are trying to do, then it will help you complete that triangle to decide what you're going to do when it comes to entering information into your Google My Business listing. So I think this is a great, valuable video. Don't miss it, watch it to the end, because it does make sense when you get your head around what we're gonna look at now.
So let's jump straight in and I'll show you exactly how Google works and what it's looking for. So here we've got Google. So they exist, they've been around for a good 10, 15 or so years, and they want to be the best search engine. They want to provide optimal results for you, the business owner, and for you, the customer. So what do they do? They produce from their algorithms and from their database information that then provides us with either maps, which is like Google map results, particularly with businesses in mind, and also they provide top results, which can sometimes include uh, organic results, but on a local basis, when it comes to business, we want to obviously be in the top three if we can, whether it's on Google Maps, or whether it's appearing in the search engine results. Sometimes you hear them talk about SERPs, search engine results pages. So that's what we're, Google's trying to produce, the best results. If their results aren't any use, people won't use Google as a search engine, then Google no longer becomes a profitable business because they can't advertise. So that's the kind of the model that Google's working on. But of course, customers are involved and we're involved in this process too, so it has to work for us. So how does that part work? Well, let's bring in the customers then. So these are your customers and they don't know about you yet, but they do know they can go to Google, so they know they can get results from Google, so they look to Google, they find it on maps, they find it on search engine results, and Google wants to show relevant business results to them. The customers, well, they want to find relevant business results. So this is the perfect match, but of course we want our business to be there, and we need to understand how we can get ourselves involved. Now, depending on what your customers do, if they click on these results, their clicks give signals to Google. So basically Google finds out through the browser that they are clicking on certain results. And when they click on your business or they click on a search engine result, it's in one of the search engine result pages, this tells Google what's popular. It also tells Google what's accurate for your customers. And that then means that Google will then manipulate the results to feed even more proper results to your customers. So basically it's refining going on by means of clicks and by means of signals and by means of the Google algorithm. And as they refine it, then the better results come through to your customers. But you still haven't got your business involved. And that's when then Google produced Google My Business. And this is where Google My Business comes in, where they've enabled you to actually control the data and the information about your business within the Google search engine. So when Google is providing search engine results, it can give the right information about your business. Accuracy, trustworthiness, honesty is essential for this to work. So accuracy is important. And this is when we talk about having accurate data in Google. You may have heard the expression NAP, name, address, phone number. These things need to be consistent. And if they're consistent, and if you've entered the right details into Google My Business, then that will go through to Google, their database, and then they'll then be able to produce even better results in the future. So the way it works basically is Google wants to have accurate results. You have the ability to control the accuracy of those results, and customers want to find good results close to them on a local SEO basis. And this is basically the process of how Google works with your business and with your information. Now, if you've got any questions on this, then make sure you put them down below in the comments and I'll try and cover those for you as well. But hopefully that's the most simplest way to explain how Google works with your business. So what next if you're really serious about optimizing Google business profiles? Well, there's a few other things you can do. Since this video was made, I've now got five things that I offer that are gonna really help you grow your business or help others grow their business. So what are they? Number one, I offer a free weekly email. So you can get that from here on my website and that keeps you updated on a weekly basis. Number two, you can take a 75 minute workshop where it'll help you get reviews to help you get ranking and it's an incredibly cheap price as well. And that's on my website and I'll put a link down below for you. Number three, you can get my free downloads and my resources here on my website. Number four, you can consult on a one-to-one -one with me on Zoom where I'll take your business and I'll give you a bespoke strategy to help your business rank too. 
And number five, you can of course subscribe to this video channel on YouTube where you'll get these free tutorials and it will help you also benefit from my 27 years of experience in web design. So it's over to you. Subscribe down below and then watch this video next and I'll see you on that video.